Herzlich willkommen, meine Damen und Herren, zum heutigen Abend. Es ist eine Premiere. Wir zeigen das erste Mal unser Microlino Vorserienmodell, wo wirklich erst gerade vor wenigen Stunden hier in Zürich angekommen sind. Ladies and Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this presentation tonight for the first um, unveiling of our Microlino. I will not switch from German into English. I will keep my speech and also my sons afterwards in English because uh, we have a lot of people from abroad and not everybody's understanding Swiss German or High German. Without your help, the Microlino project would not have been possible. And we would really like to thank you all for this support. We have received more than 800 requests for tickets tonight, but as you can see, even with something like 350 people, it's rather crowded. I hope you really gave your jacket to the garderobe, otherwise you're going to be really hot by the end of the show. <laughs> We're also very sorry for those uh, who could not come because the tickets were not available. But some of you may know that this presentation will be broadcasted over Facebook tonight, live. And here I welcome everybody is, who is watching um, from wherever they are in the world about this presentation. Twenty years ago, it's a long time ago, I tell you, <laughs> probably you can see it. I wanted to create a product that is ideal for a distance that is too far to walk, but is too short to take the car or the bicycle. This was the concept, and I called it micromobility. And actually, in order to bring this concept to the market, I was contacting Smart. Smart, they made in 1997, they made a, a small car, a small city car. Unfortunately, not electric. But they liked my concept to put in every smart car one of our scooters. I was very happy. But then, as always, something unexpected occurred. Mr. Hayek gave up and sold his shares to Mercedes. And my dream of having a micro scooter in a smart car was over. Nevertheless, I put my micro scooter on the market in 1999 with a great success. In China, we had about 500 workers were making our scooters. Within one year, we went up to 16,000 workers in three factories. They were producing 80,000 uh, scooters per day, every day. But when you have success, you will be copied. This is what my, my father always used to say. And within a short time, that we probably had about 300 factories copying our scooters. So it was very difficult. But anyhow, what I have learned from this is two things. Invest into innovation and not into lawyers. And the second is, Built up a brand that people trust. And this is what we have done the last 20 years. We have been developing several products, we got a lot of prices, and we have managed to be the leader of the market for these portable mobility products. Some of our products you can see in the back of the hall for those who are interested. Today, we are selling in 80 countries, quite successful, still. So for some of you who think, is this business still running? I can tell you, yes, it is, and quite nicely. <laughs> Now I jump back to 1953. There was an Italian company called Isorivolta. They had an interesting idea, and we got inspired by that. They made a small city car, but with a stinky engine, 200 cubic. In 2015, first time I had a chance to ride one of these 
Isetta, but it was electrified. So it was a completely different experience. When I tested this with my two boys, Oliver and Merlin, we said, this is an interesting concept. This something has something to do with our vision about urban mobility, about space saving products. Uh, why don't we do something and think about how could we implement this into our marketing strategy? We decided to start a project. We made a study to see how can we change the design to make it more modern looking, but also to still have this retro look that many of you probably remember and like. We started to work with design work and together with 10 students from the University of Winterthur. Here in Zurich, we call them ZHAW. And they made a project for their final thesis. And when they were finished, I was really, really impressed what these 10 students have done. These 10, these 10 students have been guided by Marco Brunori, who is our designer. He's also here, by the way. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Marco, you know you have done a fantastic job, and you know it has not been easy all the time. But uh, you actually managed um, to finish that job. But then I say, OK, we have a nice model, what you can see here. We should go one more step. And next step will be, let's make a prototype. It's not so easy to make a prototype. It's costing a lot of money here in Switzerland. So I said, mm, with the connection I'm having in China, maybe. So one of the 10 students, it was Pascal Studerus. He was looking for a job for one year, just for one year. I said, OK, so why for one year? I, yeah, I want to go on a journey with my motorbike. Okay, so I have a good job for you for one year, and you can learn your world journey with a lot of things that are unknown. So two weeks later, we were sitting in an airplane, uh, and we were uh, heading towards China, and we found a factory that was making our prototype. It was not so easy because uh, the factory did not really have a really great engineering department and they didn't speak English at all. <laughs> and Pascal Studeris, he was uh, being used of a different way of working because he was an airplane mechanic also before. <coughs> Excuse me. So for him, it was really difficult. He almost gave up and I said, no way. You have a contract for one year. You're not giving up that easily. So I said, what can I do? So I sent him my younger son, Merlin, to China, just to support him morally. And they really managed to finish the prototype in less than five months. They shipped the Microlino by truck, by train, by plane. And they finally arrived in Zurich airport. It was not a soft landing, I guarantee you. <laughs> the guy who was running the forklift truck, he dropped it from two meters. We wanted to show it on one of our toy show in Nuremberg. There was no way, because the toy show started three days after. So anyhow, I had a smiling and a crying eye when I saw it. The smiling eye? because it was the first time that I have seen the car live. And I tell you, if you see a, all of a sudden a prototype live, it's a really impressive, a really strong feeling. This was the laughing eye, and the crying eye, of course, is what you can see. Anyhow, we, um, we fixed it in Switzerland. It was costing more than to make the prototype, by the way. <laughs> but that's the way it is. And we were just on time uh, to go to Geneva for the car show which was in uh, March 2016. It's not easy to find a space in Geneva in a very short time of notice. But we actually managed to get a booth. It was in the second row, as you can see, not in the first row. It was only three square meters. And it was the cheapest uh, booth you could probably find. Just for a for a joke or to, to find out if, if people are interested in a car like this. 
My two boys said, let's make a reservation list to see how many people are interested. Within one week, we had 500 reservations. We were really... <laughs> we are also very surprised. And people understood our vision. But at the other hand, we had a huge problem all of a sudden. How are we going to produce that? Because this was never planned. It was just a marketing concept in a show car. Well, you know, sometimes in life, you don't plan anything ahead of time. And sometimes it's just some, something happens, and, 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 and you're lucky. And we were lucky. Eric, are you here? I met Eric Tatsari. Please come up to the stage. I found a partner. Ciao, bello. Eric, he's my partner. He's my 50% partner in this project. Eric was crazy enough to go with me in this partnership because we don't know where this journey is going to end. But the funny thing was, we met. And less than 24 hours, we shake hands, you remember? And we had to deal. So it's almost like quick dating. <laughs> this was two years ago. Now, I think, Eric, it's the first time you are here in Zurich. Is that possible? Yes, it's the first time. Uh, it's a shame, but I'm sure he's, he's coming back. <laughs> Eric, oh, so, yeah. Uh, Eric, when have you started to make your first electric car? I started in uh, 2006, 11 years ago. Uh, when I count, probably he has more experience than Elon Musk. So I would say we have the perfect partner for our project. Give applause to Eric. Thanks a lot, and thanks for coming. By the way, these are these, his uh, three type of cars he's uh, doing at the moment. Um, they're all electric. Um, He's the only one in Italy who's making an electric car in a mass production. And uh, the reason why I really like to go back to Italy is because the old Iso Rivolta was actually coming from Italy. And I think it's really nice to produce this in Italy and not in China or, let's say, in, yeah, in another country. <laughs> so. Besides that, Eric's main business is making uh, aluminum components for the car industry and for the motorbike industry. He has 300 people on the payroll um, working um, with the die casting products. Uh, interesting is also Eric was, had, to, had to take over the company when he was 23 years old. So he has quite a bit of experience, not only in electric cars, but also in running a company production with uh, 300 people. I have a high respect for this, Eric. Now, let's go to these, these two guys. They put a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> Believe me, the last 20 years, it wasn't that easy. Because uh, going into this new uh, business with uh, scooters, um, you have a lot of enemies. You have a lot of copycats. Now, it wasn't easy 20 years. So I was slowly going into my pensions um, stage, and then the two boys said, Dad, this car, I think you have to do it. So they gave me a lot of pressure. But I said, okay, we can do it. But you have to take the lead, and you have to make the commitment while you're studying and right after the study. And it's not a 100% job, I guarantee you. It's a 120% job. Oliver is already working in the company for over a year. Merlin has been working for two years because he made a, a year in between. So they have really been leading this uh, project for quite some time. Now I would like to end my part with the thoughts about electric cars. Many years before, there are electric car makers, even some of, uh, in Switzerland, 
They made good cars, but they failed. Why did they fail? It wasn't technology. It was timing. It, timing was not there for an electric car. And we are, again, so lucky because we strongly believe the time is now. People have realized we need to, ch to have a new mindset if you want to change something, especially in big cities. It cannot, we cannot continue like this. So timing is a really important issue. I know you're going to like this one. This is also timing, you know. He came at the right time. Uh, he doesn't like our product that much, but uh, anyhow, so a friend of mine made this comics for me, so thank you very much, <laughs> Evio. It's about what, uh, what's happening right now in Switzerland. By the way, today, for those who don't know, we have the World Economic Forum in Davos, and I think uh, tomorrow he will arrive uh, not so uh, smoothly. He really comes with a big uh, crowd. This quote from Bill Gates really leads us in our project. Also, we have overestimated what we can do in one year. I'm sorry, it's the way it is. But we have a vision for 10 years. And this is very important that you have the long-term thinking. And that's why I'm very happy to have a very young team in the Microlino project. And they have a vision for 10 years or more to go on. Now it's time, show time. Now it's time to hand over. To the young guys, please. Thank you very much for listening and coming. Exactly eight years ago, Steve Jobs asked himself a simple question during his iPad keynote presentation. Is there space for a third category product between a smartphone and a laptop? Now, don't get me wrong. We are not pretending to be Apple nor Steve Jobs. But the question he asked was similar to ours. Is there space? for a third category product between a motorbike and a car? And obviously, the answer was yes, which is why we're standing here today. But let us tell you why we think there is a need for such a type of vehicle. I'm going to bother you with some statistics first. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry. On average, there are 1.2 people sitting in a car. That means that usually people are driving in their car alone. And I'm sure you've noticed this in your daily lives where most of the time you're actually sitting in your car alone. Secondly, the average car drives 35 kilometers per day. These two facts illustrate that most cars nowadays are actually over-engineered. In fact, cars are designed for only 5% of the distances where you go on vacation with your family or on a long business trip. So we designed the Microlino specifically around those 95% of use cases. But we weren't the first ones. 
In the 50s, a lot of tiny vehicles emerged that already involved a lot of these features. Um, here on the presentation, I will show you some examples. Especially in Germany, they were quite successful for a short period of time. But they were tiny and simple because of a different reason. People could just not afford bigger cars. So about five years later, when the economic situation changed, the demand for these type of vehicles uh, dropped and they stopped producing them. So now we think it is time to revive these concepts, but this time for a different reason. We believe that with the Microlino, we created an eco-friendlier, more practical and fun mobility solution. But is it really eco-friendlier? This is a question we are asked quite often. And I think there's a lot of confusion about whether electric cars are actually eco-friendlier or not. Now, I'm telling you my opinion and the opinion of most statistics, yes, of course they are. But still, eco-friendlier does not mean zero emission. Cars and also electric cars, they still emit CO2 whether it is in production or during usage. But because it was too easy to just compare the Microlino to a gasoline car, because we knew we would be better anyway, we said, let's compare it to an electric car. So we said, let's compare it to the Nissan Leaf, which I like a lot, by the way. And so according to our calculations, the Microlino needs about 60% less energy during production and about 65% less energy during usage. Now, I'm not going to bother you with too many details about this. And those of you who are interested, we can discuss this afterwards. But the reason for this is that we have a much smaller battery, we have less parts, and the car is much lighter. So, this is compared to an electric car. And electric cars, as I said before, are a lot better than gasoline cars in terms of emissions. So I don't think I need to tell you how big the difference would have been if we compared it to a big SUV. But now, uh, let me guide you through some of the key features of the car. So unlike most cars, the Microlino has a seat bench instead of two single seats. It was important to us that you could sit next to each other comfortably. And after all, we just thought that uh, a seat bench is way cooler than uh, two single seats. And there will be many customization options uh, for the seat later on, but for the pre-series, we just kept it in black for now. Another cool feature that we have integrated is the sunroof that will be standard in every vehicle. So in summer, you can simply open uh, the sunroof and enjoy a nice sun breeze while driving. This way, the Microlino will give you joy no matter what the weather is outside. Next. So uh, let's have a look at the dashboard. It is very clean and simple because we wanted to free you from all the clutter that most modern cars have nowadays. So there is only a, a round screen in the middle that shows all the important information while driving. For example, speed or your charging status. If you need to navigate to somewhere, you can simply use the best navigation device available, which is your own smartphone. Uh, if you want to use the Microlin in your daily life, it needs enough storage space. And a lot of you guys asked us if there's space for one or two beer crates. And uh, I can assure you that there is enough space, not only for your groceries, but for two beer crates together. <laughs> ah, and uh, by the way, we couldn't resist uh, trying to fit a human being inside of the trunk of the Microlino. And as you can see here, he actually does. <laughs> 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 
But when buying the Macrolino, the trunk will not be empty. So, in fact, it will be the only car in the world that will not have an empty trunk right after you have bought it. Maybe some of you have already guessed it. We will integrate a special edition micro scooter into every trunk of the Macrolino. <laughs> so this way, once you park your car, you can simply grab your scooter and ride the last mile to your destination. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> Finally, we have achieved what our father dreamt of 20 years ago. A micro scooter inside of every vehicle. Or micro Lino. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about the exterior. Uh, maybe some of you remember, a few months ago we asked our Facebook fans which colors they wanted to see the micro Lino in. And so we got more than 4,000 answers, and uh, to say it short, these are your seven favorite colors. So Zurich Blue, Paris Mint, Milano Red, Amsterdam Orange, London Gray, <laughs> Yeah, it's a mean one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotham Black and Vienna White. Now, although the Microlino is about 10% bigger than the uh, old Iso Isetta or the Heinkel Trojan, it can still cross park. And now that is where the front door can really show its use. With a normal car, like with a smart car, you would always worry about not getting out of your car when you're cross-parking. With the front door of the Microlino, you simply get out directly on the sidewalk. But this also means that the Microlino uses substantially less parking space than a normal car. In fact, you can put three Microlinos in one parking space. But why is that important? Nowadays, there are eight parking spaces per car. And in some cities, there is more space devoted to parking than there is to actual roads. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So I think it is in all of our best interest to reduce the space waste from parking. Last but not least, I would like to talk a little bit about range. Now, we said before that the average car drives 30 to 35 kilometers. And the Microlino has two battery options with 120 or 215 kilometers of range. But how far is that exactly? So uh, we took uh, the example here in uh, Zurich. And as you can see, with a small battery, you would be able to pretty much cover all the greater Zurich area and some villages around it without a problem. So not just one way, but two way. And with the biggest, with a bigger battery, you could go one way, um, you could drive to France or to Germany. Now, of course, it is not intended to be a long range vehicle, but we just want to explain that 215 kilometers is pretty far. Um, for those of you who don't know Zurich that well, let's look how that would be in Paris. So even with a small battery, you could cross Paris uh, multiple times without running out of charge. And with a big battery, you could even drive up to the sea. Now, some of you may think that you still want uh, 500 kilometers of range just in case. But think of it this way, having a big battery is like taking your luggage with you every single day just in case you might go on vacation one hour after. <laughs> and now, well, it's certainly nice waking up and one hour after deciding you're going to the south of France, let's be honest, 
this is not really realistic, which is why you're not taking your suitcase along with you every day. So why would you take a big battery with you every day, although you all never need it? Now, because our battery is not very large, it also means we can charge it very quickly. You can charge the Microlino in just four hours on a normal socket. So the same socket where you would charge your smartphone. So this means that you don't need a charging station at home. You just use the same plug uh, where you would charge your smartphone. Now, if you're on the go and you want to charge on a special uh, charging station for electric cars, it would, of course, be a little bit faster, so that would take one hour. But the important thing is you do not need a charging station at home. So if you still ask yourself when you are going to use the Microlino, here are a few examples where the Microlino is actually better than a motorbike or even a car. So first of all, it is ideal for your daily commute because you're protected from the weather in case it rains and the heating will keep you warm during winter. No, messy. You will easier find a parking spot than with any normal car because it is so small, so you can actually park three Microlinias in one parking space. And uh, actually, you could almost say that parking starts making fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can easily uh, go for a shopping trip, uh, shop your groceries, or go to the gym, because you have enough space in the trunk. So these cases, these examples, represent about 90% uh, of the cases where you would actually take your car. To sum it up, we have uh, 90 kilometers per hour of top speed, so you can go on a highway if you want to. Um, we have a, two battery options, 120 or 215 kilometers. We have a standard heating that will keep you warm in winter. We have a standard sunroof, which is pretty cool in summer. We have a micro scooter integrated into every trunk of the car for your last mile. You don't need a charging station to charge your Michelino at home. You can simply plug it into a normal socket, and all this for a base price of around 12,000 euros. To give you an example, the smart... Woo! <laughs> 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 right on time. We practiced this before. <laughs> no. Um, to give you an example, the smart electric drive costs about 22,000 euros, so almost double. This makes the Microlino one of the first affordable electric cars in the world. <laughs> but how can you buy one? And uh, I hope most of you have already reserved your own Microlino. But uh, currently we have around 4,600 reservations so far. And uh, Zurich will be the first city where we will start selling the Microlino over our store and through the web page. Another important aspect about our business model is that we want to sell the license to companies outside of Europe so that they can produce the car locally. This would uh, generate local jobs and uh, decrease the transportation emissions. So once you have your own Microlino, at some point you maybe want to do a service. And as we did not want to build up our own uh, service network, we partnered up with uh, Bosch Car Services. And uh, Bosch Car Services, they have around 70 service stations in Switzerland and around 16,000 in the whole world. So currently, we're working together with uh, Bosch for uh, Switzerland, and we're looking forward to work with them uh, in other countries as well. Now, this was actually um, the part of Pascal Schuderus. I think he deserves a little bit of applause. Maybe some of you remember. Thank he you. was the guy who built the first prototype in China. 
But uh, we're going to be honest with you. Um, of course, on a product presentation, you're always a little bit last minute. So he was a little bit tired of bringing um, one of the two microlinos here to Zurich. So he asked uh, me if I could say a few words about this. So we started, I'm just going to quick summary about our process. We started in 2015 with the first design sketches. Uh, beginning of 2016, uh, we showed the first um, prototype that was made in China by Pascal and by Merlin. <laughs> and it was from a good time, Pascal, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and from, from there on, we, uh, we were starting to develop it for a series vehicle. Now, some of you may say, okay, but uh, what's, you know, what's the difference between that and the one that is standing uh, in front uh, about the uh, old uh, China prototype? And it is a huge difference because this one is actually a vehicle that would work in a series production. But it's a pre-series vehicle. So it is not perfect. So you will have a, you can test it afterwards, but there is still some stuff that is not yet perfect. But what we want to say to you that is, it's going to come like this 90%, but a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> now, what we are going to do from now on until uh, we launch the product in spring or summer this year, we need to test, test, and test um, the Microlino and to, to really fine tune it so that it's really nice and smooth to ride. And, uh, it's just perfect. Also, we're doing uh, all the homologation work. So we already had two homo uh, days of homologation. So this means um, the, you know, the, the official certification that you can go on European roads. We, they were uh, pretty successful. And so now this is, th this is what we're going to do in the, the next few months. And so because we don't know exactly how long the homologation process takes, because you know, it's not in our hands, it's actually, um, it's not in our hands, it's actually uh, the, the Italian government that decides how long it goes. Um, this is why we did not communicate a specific date, but um, we are very confident that we can start with the first sales in Zurich in spring or summer 2018. And other countries and other cities will follow soon. And of course, the, the next country where we will launch it will be Germany. And then, yeah, other countries will follow thereafter. So now I think our father will say a few last words before you can have a gentle sure. test sit. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I, I would really like to thank you. You did a fantastic job. Merlin. You really made me proud as a father, and I'm sure you're proud too, Jean-Yves. Um, please stay here for a while. I really now want to that the Microlino team is quickly coming up on stage, so you see who who else is behind this project. Uh, unfortunately, I can only bring them up, which are from our uh, Swiss team, because the one in Italy they have to work very hard. You have seen Eric, but there is another guy, which we did all the, the beginning discussions, which is uh, um, Mario. Mario. He's Mario. here, huh? Yeah, he's here. Mario, please come also to stage. You are one of the project leaders in Italy. <laughs> then Tobias. <laughs> Robin. Hey, Yannick. <laughs> Ivan. And Ferdinand, please come on stage quickly. And Yannick is missing. And now... Hey, Pascal! Yeah. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. <laughs> uh, of course. Where's Yannick? <laughs> so, Woo. this is Yannick. And I also like to have Marco Brunori, although he is doing this as a hobby, but still, Marco Brunori, please come on stage because we have been spending many times together um, making this design. I don't know. And at very last, Pascal Stunderus. There he goes. Pascal. 
As we said, he was one of the 10 students who was crazy enough to go with me to China. And um, he really brought these two pre-serie models here to Zurich with a car, single driven. One arrived on Saturday, almost midnight, and the red one arrived today, around 11 o'clock. <laughs> and uh, like it is, he had a, a long journey, almost 12 hours, from uh, Imola uh, to Zurich because uh, the car broke down. It was not an electric car, it was a, a fuel car <laughs> with a turbocharger. So didn't really help, but we are glad that finally you managed it. And um, I would really like to give over the, the project now to the young team. Thank you very much. And oh, here is Marco Brunori. Finally, you made it. Hey! Ooh. <laughs> so what is going to be next now? I think we have a possibility to sit into the car and um, make a picture. We have a Polaroid, so everybody can take a picture. The other thing we're doing, there are some people here, they already made a reservation, I've heard. <laughs> and uh, Who made a reservation? Come on. Yeah. 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 Woo! <laughs> and all of them who made a reservation already, because they have to wait a little while, and because of our philosophy, better urban living, we want them to test it, and they get a free scooter before they go home. We have enough here. So even for those who want to make another reservation, please do it now. You for sure get a scooter. A reservation is not an order. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, this, this. Thank you.